Seattle is one of the epicenters right now of protest and demonstrations. They are occupying one neighborhood as an autonomous police-free zone. Now, Mayor Durkin is talking with the protesters about this, but you know who just can't keep his fingers out of this. And he is saying he's going to start calling the protests domestic terrorists and demanding that the mayor take the city back or else he will. Now, she responded, and I quote, keep us all safe. Go back to your bunker. But isn't he in danger of escalating the violence with this tough talk, especially since the mayor and the city and the police are all working together to figure out how best to do this? Do you think he's helping at all? No, he's not, he doesn't help anything. As a, matter of, as a matter of fact, he has the nerve to call anybody a domestic terrorist. He's the domestic terrorist. He's the one who's been impeached uh, for obstructing justice uh, in this country. He's the one who has friends who are in jail. You know, he, uh, uh, Roger Stone's in jail, Michael Flynn's in jail, Roger Cohen, uh, Michael Cohen is in jail. He, he's, he's worried about people in Seattle. By the way, if he wants to do something about Seattle, somebody better show him where it is on the map. I doubt that he even knows where it is. Get back in your bunker. Get back in the bunker. Well, Sonny, he's <laughs> calling them domestic terrorists. What, what, what is... <laughs> What do you think this one is about? Is this more trying to get people's attention <laughs> away from what's actually happening? Or what do you think this is? Well, I, you know, it's interesting because there sure. is no government list of um, domestic terrorist groups. And the U.S. government definition of a domestic terrorism of domestic terrorism requires it to be dangerous to human life but i think he's trying to invoke the term domestic terrorist so that he can use military um, intervention so that he can call in the national guard so that he can use uh helicopters so that he can uh militarize the situation and i think you know it's really a shocking description of Americans exercising their constitutional rights. And I think people should be very fearful of that. In fact, a lot of military groups have come out against using that kind of language. One group, the uh, Modern Military Association of America, has condemned those words and said, uh, this, labeling American citizens peacefully exercising their First Amendment rights as terrorists is an egregious breach of his yes. oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. That really means something when you have a group of vets saying that the President of the United States should not be labeling peaceful protesters, which is what they are doing in Seattle, as domestic terrorists. I think we should all, as Americans, be very concerned about that. Right. And, Joy, I need you to clear up one thing. You were not calling the president a domestic terrorist. You were just saying that his, his take on this is, is a little crazier than you thought. Is that right? Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm not calling anybody names like he does. It's just that it seems ironic that he would be calling people domestic terrorists. I mean, I'll get in trouble for calling him a domestic right. terrorist. Gotcha. He won't get in trouble for calling innocent no. people domestic terrorists. That's the irony of this conversation. No, he won't. Yes. So it's I take crazy. it back. I take now, it back. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Good. So, uh, uh, Megan, as we're sitting here and we're talking about, you know, the mayor and the police departments and uh, all the folks are getting together to figure out how best to make life in Oregon good for everybody, he's talking about, you know, bringing out and threatening to bring out these military guys. You, do you think that's the best way to go with this? Yeah, I mean, I think like most Americans and most people who are related to veterans, throwing around the term terrorist, be it the president or anyone else, is something that I take offense to. I think that we need to implore true prudence when it comes to our jargon. Um, this actually, what's happening in Seattle, reminds me more of Occupy Wall Street than anything else. I'm sorry, and Seattle. We... Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Excuse me? Sorry. I made a mistake. Yeah, I said I, I said something different, and you just reminded me that I was wrong. I, my inside voice became my outside voice. Please oh, forgive sure. me. Oh, sure, no problem. In Seattle, yes. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know what I was saying. I'm sorry. Uh, we can move on. 
No, no, you were saying that oh, this so, reminds I, I really, you of Occupy Wall Street. Okay, yes, it does remind me of Occupy Wall Street. And Occupy Wall Street, if we go back in time a little bit, which I think it only happened in 10 years ago, um, the protesters actually had a problem with putting together their list of demands, and they were ultimately hurt by their specific legislative demands. And if we remember, in the park that they occupied, and it didn't just happen in New York, but it happened in other parts of the country, the protesters ended up having a problem feeding themselves. They There was defecation problems not to be disgusting this early in the problem all over the par park. And then there were ultimately sexual assaults and rapes that went on. And I think uh, if, if this isn't careful in what's happening in the specific um, autonomous zone in Seattle, it could go the way of Occupy Wall Street. But I would implore everyone the way we talk about this, until there is violence or, you know, anyone doing anything that uh, is in, in any vein which uh, Sunny described, I just don't think we should be throwing around the word terrorism. I, I just think it's, it's a very dangerous, slippery slope. I think it, we should use it when warranted for people like Al Baghdadi. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I have to say, you know, I, whenever people are working out their own issues, as they are in Seattle, when you have all four groups talking and saying, how can we best serve our city? I think it's always a good thing, because it means that everyone is listening. And I'm, I'm all for anyone who's listening to figure out how to make it better.